The date is 15th of March 2015. Our silo was cleaned out thoroughly last October and then refilled. Since then, it has had two more N plus deliveries of A1 grade pellets from Portugal, a large one in December and a top up in February. The February delivery was deliberately small to let it get low quickly so we could see how the dregs look after three deliveries in a winter of heating. Let's see how the pellets look. There are five suction points in this flat floor silo designed to maximize the storage capacity of the space. The cone has formed around each suction point. The pellets on the face of each cone look dusty. They look remarkably similar to photos we have been sent by dozens of customers and installers who have problems with their systems, supposedly illustrating how the fuel is to blame. Strangely though, this system, which has been running since October 2011, has never had a problem with the fuel. Appearances can be deceptive. People who know little about bulk solids handling, and that includes most installers and equipment manufacturers, often assume that the face simply exposes the condition of the pellets throughout the load. In reality, through a well-known process in bulk solids handling called particle size segregation, the smaller particles, known as fines, accumulate on the face because they do not flow as well as the whole pellets, which roll down the face, leaving the fines behind. Scratch the surface and you find that the pellets are clean underneath. This is why photos and samples of the pellets on the surface in a silo tell us nothing about the overall condition of the delivered load. For obvious reasons that this video illustrates, customers are not guaranteed that local concentrations will not occur. They are guaranteed that the average fines in the delivered load will be below 4%, provided that certain conditions are met. That can only be tested by taking a representative sample of the delivered load. Because of the processes of particle size segregation illustrated here, a representative sample cannot be taken from the surface of the pellets, nor from a store where a substantial proportion of the pellets have been used and the fines concentrations have thereby increased, let alone from the outlet of the store or from the day hopper. Dust, which is the airborne fraction of the fines, tends to stick to the surface of the store and will accumulate thickly on flatter surfaces. As can be seen here, it even sticks to the walls and ceilings of the silo. Some manufacturers claim that their fabric silos do not need to be cleaned, most fabric silos are designed to allow the air to escape through the pores in the fabric. You can see in this video how the dust will accumulate on the fabric, clog the pores and prevent the air from escaping. This dust needs to be dislodged from the fabric regularly by beating it or vacuuming it. If you use a vacuum cleaner, be careful to use an industrial unit that is ATEX compliant to avoid the risk of a dust explosion, or use a long suction extension so that it does not need to be taken into the store. If you go into the store to dislodge or vacuum the dust, make sure you have ventilated the store thoroughly to avoid the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning, and wear goggles and a mask to avoid the inflammatory effects of dust. Wood dust can cause reactions such as pink eye, which occurred in this case despite wearing goggles and a mask because the goggles were not tight enough to the face. Having redistributed the pellets over the suction points, the surface of the pellets now looks nice and clean. See how quickly dusty faces begin to reappear as the cones form again after turning the suction back on. Installers often try to blame the fuel when they are unable or, un or unwilling to diagnose the real problem. Often encouraged by the equipment manufacturer who claims to be the expert and asserts that the problem cannot be with their equipment. They would say that, of course, but credulous customers often believe them. They encourage their customers to claim that the problems are to do with dusty pellets and try to substantiate that with photos or localised samples of the dregs or supposed expert opinion, even though almost none of them has any education in bugs on its handling. So why does this system not have problems with the fines in the fuel, even though the pellets look like those that installers often complain about? Two simple reasons. Firstly, the store is cleaned each summer to remove the accumulated fines. Because this is a flat floor silo, the dregs need to be sucked out. If the silo had a sloping floor, cleaning might be as simple as running the store empty, making sure any perch material is dislodged, for example by beating the floor with a rubber hammer, or poking the material in the corners until it flows out, and then hoovering up any perched dust. Secondly, the suction pipes are short, with minimal vertical sections or gradients, and only a couple of bends. The pressure drop along the pipes is therefore small. There is minimal degradation along the pipes, and plenty of suction at each suction point to make sure that the pellets don't bridge and block. There is plenty of guidance available for those who want to know. The m handbook sets out the rules that apply to an accredited blown delivery of pellets. If your system is certified to run on n A1 pellets, there is no point complaining about something that is not guaranteed by the n scheme. If the fuel complies with the n A1 standards, but your system doesn't run, you have a problem with your system, not the fuel, whatever your installer and equipment manufacturer might claim. A new version of the n handbook will come into force in July 2015. 
The UK Pellet Council publishes recommendations for storage of wood pellets. All pellet stores must follow this guidance, or the N plus 4% delivered fines guarantee does not apply. This advice has been available for many years in English, firstly from Germany, then from Ireland, and for the past two years from the UK Pellet Council. Yet most installers still behave like they have never seen this document. It will be superseded in July 2015 by a similar document from the European Pellet Council. The UK Pellet Council organised the Wolfson Centre for Bulk Solids Handling Technologies at the University of Greenwich to, provi to provide regional day courses for installers to learn about bulk solids handling. Although there are around 700 installers with thousands of employees registered on the microgeneration certification scheme, installers only sent around 25 of their employees in total on these courses. Further courses could be provided if installers showed enough responsibility to get their employees educated on this subject. There is a list of those installers and others who have attended these courses on the UK Pellet Council website. If you are thinking of buying a pellet heating system, you should think carefully before buying it for a company that has not attended these courses.